from KSAT 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. Accused cop killer Otis McCain, who was arrested within hours after he allegedly shot and killed veteran SAP detective Benjamin Marconi, was in court today as prosecutors played some dramatic, never before seen video of that arrest. Our Paul Venema there as McCain's lawyers tried to convince the judge not to allow that video, nor statements McCain made to police that day to be used by prosecutors during his trial. We were able to prevent the vehicle from leaving the scene by blocking men from the front. This SAPD chopper video shows SWAT team officers surrounding a white car inside Otis McCain. Watch the white puff of smoke as they detonate what they call a distraction device. Then, guns drawn, they approach the car, pull McCain out, put him on the ground, and handcuff him. Prosecutors also showed KSAT news video shot later that night at police headquarters as McCain was transferred to the magistrate's office. As he arrived at the magistrate's office, McCain continued talking. He started making statements, which was, I'm glad, he's glad that uh, I shot him. You can't judge me. Says I felt good to do what I did, um, and finally got somebody to listen. Detective Marconi was shot in the head at point blank range as he sat in his patrol car outside police headquarters. We still don't know whether the jury will see any of that video during McCain's trial. The judge will rule on its admissibility sometime between now and the beginning of the trial in April. Paul Venom, a case at 12 News. The 14-day coronavirus quarantine operation at JBSA Lackland for a group of evacuees from China is officially underway. The group includes adults and children's as children as small as infants. Each person will have their temperatures checked twice a day, along with 24-hour medical staff. If some get sick with coronavirus, they will immediately be taken to the hospital. CDC officials say despite a few cases in the nation, the risk level for Americans is low. The highest risk to Americans is still traveling in China, where the virus is spreading rapidly. We're very confident that we can keep the quarantined people here safe and that we can contain coronavirus if it is found in any of them. And I'm very happy to be a part of the CDC team that's here to make sure that this effort goes smoothly and that we're welcoming these people back home where we can take care of them properly. It's been 60 years since the CDC had issued a federal quarantine similar to this. That time it was for smallpox. New at 6, San Antonio police want to question some suspects in a jewelry store theft that happened in North Star Mall last week. This is the group of guys detectives want to speak with. The theft happened January 31st. We're told the stolen item or items were taken from Gorinsky's jewelers. That was what was taken rather and how the suspects got their hands on it not revealed, but the group was seen taking off in a black Dodge Challenger with a paper license plate. Anyone with any information is asked to call the SAPD North Property Crimes Unit at 210-207-7601. A man robbed of his truck, tacos and wallet this morning outside a Mexican restaurant on West Commerce and San Felipe Avenue. Police are still looking for the thieves. They say around 6.30 this morning, two men approached the victim outside the Mexican food restaurant. Police say one of the suspects had a gun. While they didn't use the gun, they ended up punching the victim before taking off in his Chevy pickup truck. Police say a third suspect actually followed in a Ford Fusion. Then he actually someone followed in a Ford Fusion. They followed the other two suspects from the scene. At last check, no one has been caught. San Antonio police trying to find out who this guy is. They say he held up a gas station on the south side last month. According to investigators, he walked into the Valero in the 19,300 block of Highway 281 South with a handgun and demanded money. Once he got it, he took off in a silver SUV. Anyone with any information on who this is is asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 210-224-STOP. An alleged case of child sex abuse uncovered by an alert cable repairman. Sheriff's investigators say he saw pornography on the computer of a Northeast Bear County man. That 75 year old man arrested and facing several charges. As Katrina Weber reports, it doesn't exactly come as a surprise to at least one of his neighbors. At 75 years old, Paul Zappi III may be on his way to a new life one behind bars. Bear County Sheriff's investigators say it's due to what was found behind the burglar bars of his Prince Valiant Drive home. 
An arrest affidavit says a repairman called to work on his cable TV problems last month noticed a computer full of trouble for Zappy. It says he saw child pornography on the screen, pictures of nude children. He reported it to sheriff's deputies. My dog started barking and woke me up. And there were like five or six cars. One was the sheriff's car. Robin Platera saw them as they moved in to arrest Zappy yesterday. This morning, she wore a mask to protect herself from allergens, but also worried about the children who it seems were protected at all. I thought it was odd that there was always young males over there. The affidavit says investigators also see Zappy's cell phone and found videos on it of him sexually assaulting both a young boy and girl. And based on what they saw, investigators believe some of it had been going on for a while. That neighbor says this arrest now confirms something that she and others here suspected, but maybe didn't want to believe that something here just wasn't right. I thought, well, he's just religious. He belongs to those, the Masons, and he's helping out the kids. I mean, that's what he said. He would help them out. Now it appears Zappy is in need of help from an attorney. He's being held in jail with bonds totaling $200,000. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. An alleged frequent shoplifter sitting behind bars facing two charges, robbery and theft. 22-year-old Mark Anthony Reyes accused of pulling a knife during his latest shoplifting attempt at a Target store on the southwest side. According to police, Reyes was spotted taking a backpack when he tried to leave without paying. A man recognized him, and we're told that's when Reyes pulled out a large knife and told that man to stand back. He ran off. Police did catch up to him, though. Reyes's bond set at $41,000. It's being called a scientific and strategic approach to dismantling gangs. Today, federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies stood alongside Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez to talk about a joint effort to make the San Antonio area safer. Crime and Justice reporter Devin Clark shows us how it's supposed to work and tells us about some of the high-profile cases this group has solved. Since I first took office, I said I wanted to focus the efforts of the DA's office on violent crime. And that's exactly what we're doing. Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says his office and multiple law enforcement agencies, including San Antonio Police, the Bear County Sheriff's Office, the FBI, and the DEA, are making strides in taking down top local gang members. Our uh, goal is to take these people off the street. Uh, to identify them, to work together, and, and to go to, to court and, and get maximum punishment. Some recent convictions being credited to the Texas Anti-Gang Initiative, also known as TAG, are those of Rudy Smith, a documented member of Tango Orejon, now serving a life sentence for murder and for being involved in a shootout with law enforcement. Tyler Collins, a documented member of the Bloods, sentenced to life in prison for a capital murder charge. And Manuel Garcia, a member of the Mexican Mafia, serving life in prison for intentionally running down two men with a stolen car. Stiff sentences were also handed down to members of the Crips and Rigsby Court Bloods. We have seen a very surgical strike on the leaders of this gang violence. The days of agencies hoarding information, not sharing information, are long, long past. Even with all the efforts, officials are still asking for the public's help. If you see any gang activity, you're asked to visit StopSanAntonioGangs.org. You can remain anonymous. We'll also have that information on our website, KSAT.com. Reporting outside the Kadena Reeves Justice Center, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Want to check out Trans Guide right now, Time Saver Traffic. This is 35 at AT&T Parkway. You can see it is very busy, but if you look on the access road, there are a number of vehicles involved in an accident. Again, this is not far from the rodeo grounds, but it's a little bit north of there. This is 35 at AT&T Parkway where the camera is looking north. You see an accident there that's certainly slowing things down. Well, new at six pro hockey out in San Antonio, but what about other pro sports? The sale of the San Antonio Rampage franchise to the Vegas Golden Knights begs the question, how that could affect other Alamo City teams. Garrett Berger talked with one of the biggest sports fans in local government, Judge Nelson Wolf, about what this move means. San Antonio hockey fans feeling the ice melt beneath them this week. After this season, the Rampage franchise will be gone to Nevada. It's going to be pretty like sad because my family loves to go to the games and watch them and support them. But is there a larger picture here? This is the second team Spurs Sports and Entertainment has sold off. The WNBA team, the Stars, went back in 2017. Judge Nelson Wolf assumes the Rampage's sale was just an economic decision. And 
he's not worried about the city's crown jewel of sports. But the Spurs, you know, are our team. The Holtz has said numerous times to everybody they're committed to San Antonio and they want to build that franchise. The Spurs organization also owns the San Antonio FC. With the city's MLS dreams apparently dashed, Wolf is frank on his view of that league. They're not a trustworthy organization and they lie a lot. But he thinks there's more to do on the soccer front just in a different direction. I've asked them to really try to make that break with U United States Soccer Federation, uh, with the Mexican League, where we could have a franchise here. Then there's baseball. With the missions in AAA now, there has been talk, but no solid plan yet for a new stadium. I think if we could concentrate on developing a better soccer presentation and concentrate on making sure we don't lose AAA baseball here, I think those would be the two positive steps for us to take. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Look outside with live cam this evening. We have been up, down, and all around this week as far as <laughs> yeah. weather is concerned. So now we're wondering, what's the weekend hold out? From, from snurt to sun. <laughs> from snurt <laughs> to sun. Yeah, we sure have had a uh, quite the eventful week weather-wise. A lot of ups and downs. And even earlier this morning, we were down in the 30s. Then we rose into the 70s, so big temperature range today. 71 right now. It's still dry air, though, at the dew point of 31. And as we go through the evening, temperatures will fall off gradually, make it to about 58 at 10 p.m. Midnight around 52 degrees. And overall, the weekend's looking pretty comfortable. Quick update on the aquifer, down three tenths of a foot. Pollen count, mold low, but mountain cedar moderate at 230. We'll talk about our rain chances for Sunday and even our favorable weather pattern for rain coming up. One year after a high school senior is shot and killed, her family is now speaking out. Tonight on the Night Beat, their quest for answers. News of the San Antonio Rampage leaving, hitting local hockey fans pretty hard. We'll tell you what it means for the Junior Rampage tonight. It's a, case, it's a case of where something that's supposed to be a healthier option ends up being more dangerous. That's the possible case with vaping. There's an outbreak of lung injury associated with e-cigarettes, but still a record number of teens continue to vape. Ursula Perry shows us how toxicologists believe vaping poses very different dangers than smoking cigarettes. Wade Taylor switched from smoking cigarettes to vaping because he believes it's safer. There's what, 400 and something chemicals in the cigarette? Dr. Ilona Jasper says while that's true, vaping presents a different health threat than smoking. The disease manifestations, the pathology we see in these individuals is not something you would ever see in a smoker. Jaspers, who studies the adverse effects of inhaled chemicals, says we know cigarettes can cause COPD, cancer, and emphysema, but what about e-cigarettes? We don't know what this may cause um, 20 years down the road. That's one reason why Jasper's research team is taking a closer look at what's in these products. They filled a plastic container with a popular flavoring agent found in liquid nicotine and then just let it sit for two hours. In fact, we just put a drop of the cinnamon flavoring there and it etched away the plastic and basically ate it away. Jasper says the real concern is more young people are vaping nicotine without knowing the consequences. It delivers a high dose very quickly so it gets these teens addicted much faster than a cigarette does. And she says you don't always know how much nicotine you're getting. In Europe you can only have 2% nicotine uh, whereas here we have up to 8%. She agrees regulation is key but the priority is stopping the growing number of teens from vaping prevention, education, and getting these kids off of the nicotine addiction. Dr. Jasper speaks to middle school and high school students about the dangers of e-cigarette products and vaping. She's a big advocate of bans in every state, but at the very least, a small tax on e-cigarette products that can be applied to pay for research and prevention efforts. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. A beautiful one outside today. Picture perfect out there. It was. It be good for the weekend. Yeah. Well, we're going to slide into the weekend just fine. It's going to be comfortable, but you'll notice some changes throughout the weekend that will lead to a big pattern shift as we get into next week. And next week's going to be different. Now, this week was a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be as up and down with that new weather pattern, but it is favorable for some rainfall, which would be beneficial for us. That would be good. All right, so look at that temperature spread today. 34 this morning. Then we jump to 74. It's a big 40 degree jump today. We see that often this time of year when we have these dry, sunny days, dry air in place, a lot of sunshine. 
cold mornings, comfortable afternoons. And right now, still comfortable, right near 70 throughout Bear County. Canyon Lakes at 69, along with Tarpley, Divine 73, and uh, Pleasanton right now at 74. We did hit 80 degrees southwest of town. Catula and Laredo, and even Del Rio was briefly 80 degrees earlier today as well. These temperatures will be falling off, and by early tomorrow morning, I'm expecting some low to mid 30s in the hill country, but maybe a degree or two above freezing. And then elsewhere, probably in the lower 40s, especially around San Antonio. Get down to Laredo and closer to 50. Then by tomorrow afternoon, temperatures I think will vary significantly because we'll have a little cloud deck develop over parts of our area. So I'm thinking about 65 here in San Antonio. Comfortable, but then you get closer to the Rio Grande, and well into the 70s, so noticeably warmer west of town, but not, not uncomfortable, still very pleasant and uh, nice conditions. Here's the dry air. Look at that dew points in the 20s to near 30. So the cold front that moved through several days ago, still, still impacting our weather with that dry air. I want to point this out a big wound up system over New England. That's just a doozy. High winds with that, dumping a lot of heavy snow, but that's moving out of here. Our next system is this dip in the upper level flow just northwest of Vancouver. That's actually part of our next system. It's part one of two. I really have to widen out the view here, but just to give you your bearings, we've got California here and then Hawaii on the bottom left hand side of your screen. There's a disturbance I was talking about moving into the Pacific Northwest, but also this big swirl that's over the Pacific. That, along with the other disturbance, they're both going to come together just to the west of San Antonio and give us a favorable chance or a favorable pattern, really, for rainfall as we get into next week. So let's talk about that. Upper level low sets up west of us. That throws energy our way and taps into Pacific moisture as well. So our first chance of rain is on Sunday. A few isolated showers. We get into Monday, likely some isolated areas of rain. Tuesday, Probably a few showers here and there, but a better chance of more numerous showers by Wednesday of next week. That's the way it's looking right now. And if, even if South Texas isn't the bullseye here, looks like some other part of the state will be and we'll get some good rain next week. So a lot can change between now and then, but we'll keep you updated here. 42 tomorrow morning, 65 in the afternoon, near 70 on Sunday, not as much of a temperature spread, and a few isolated showers developing in the afternoon and evening. A cold front hits, by the way, early Monday morning. That's going to set the stage for some 50s with that dampness for the middle part of the week, so you're really going to know it. And again, the peak chance of rain as of now looks like Wednesday, and Katie Blake just came in the Weather Center with that stern look on her face. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You need to put Valentine's Day on the seven. <laughs> <clears throat> Oops. I noticed you listen. Top two. Yeah. yeah. I noticed you listen. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Smart man. <laughs> And well, she probably reminded you smart too, Valentine's Day is coming Smart up, friend so, is yeah, what it was. Yeah. No, I'm not smart. <laughs> Will the Cowboys employ a Des Dak attack? Des definitely would love that to happen. Can you imagine that? Des yeah. Bryant returning back to the Dallas Cowboys. He wants to play with them, and he has reached out to Stephen Jones. Plus, we'll have the latest on Kobe's helicopter crash coming up. Portland beat San Antonio last night, 125-117. The win the series two games to one. The Blazers now hold the head-to-head -head tiebreaker advantage as the two teams struggle to reach the eighth and final Western Conference playoff spot. Trey Lyles was dropping in threes to lead the Spurs the season high at 23 points. San Antonio played tough for the first three quarters and led 92-86 heading into the fourth. And that's when things came undone for the Spurs. Portland made nine of ten three-pointers in the final frame to knock the Spurs back and they couldn't recover getting outscored 39-25. Spurs fall, dropping the seven games below 500 to match their season low. Damian made that happen. I mean, it was a good game uh, until Damian broke it open uh, with his basketball play. I mean, you know, he got through the little double teams and split pick and rolls and found his teammates and they knocked down shots. So he was the generator. He did a great job in that respect and they knocked him down. That was the difference in the game. 
Spurs will continue the rodeo road trip tomorrow night at 9 at the Sacramento Kings. Records from the helicopter that crashed and killed Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and seven others did not show any sign of engine failure, the National Transportation Safety Board said today. Investigators said the twin engine helicopter was traveling at more than 180 miles per hour and 4,000 feet per minute when it crashed. The helicopter's instrument panel was destroyed and most of the devices were displaced. The flight controls were broken and suffered fire damage. Investigators believe that since a tree branch at the crash site was cut, the engines were working and rotors turning at the time of impact. All four of the helicopter's blades had similar damage, the report stated. The NTSB is investigating the accident, including any role heavy fog played, and a final report isn't expected for at least a year. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Former Dallas Cowboys wide receiver Des Bryant wants back in the NFL and he wants to wear the star on his helmet again. Bryant, the Cowboys franchise leader in touchdown receptions with 73, hasn't played since 2017. The Cowboys cut him after that season. In November 2018, he signed a one-year deal with the Saints but tore his Achilles tendon during practice and never played a game for them. Now Bryant is on the comeback trail. He's posted video of himself working out the last few months in hopes of snagging an NFL gig. Bryant reached out to Cowboys. Cowboys executive vice president Stephen Jones asking him to keep him in mind. And here's what Stephen told the Fort Worth Star Telegram quote. He has texted me that he would like to come back. Jones said we have nothing but great respect for Des and what he accomplished here. Certainly as we look forward into the future, we look at all opportunities and all potential players that could maybe help us out. End quote. San Antonio FC is hard at work getting ready for the upcoming USL championship season. They opened training camp January 27th and today held a closed door preseason match at El Paso Locomotive, which they lost 6-2. New head coach Alan Marcino wants to improve the team's chemistry and so far so good. I think the coaching staff has done a great job putting, putting together a bunch of guys that, that really you know, gel and, and are kind of all pointed, pointed in one direction towards the same goal. So um, I like, I like uh, our team culture, definitely. I like our cohesiveness. Um, so I think, you know, I think, I think we're all on the same page. SAFC will open the regular season Saturday, March 7th at home versus Real Monarchs SLC. We wish them luck. That's right. All right. Thanks, Larry. Still to come at six, some Madison High School students cooking up championships all last year for the school barbecue teams. Both the boys and the girls, winners, what they'll be taking with them as they try to continue their winning ways this year. And the top Democrats looking to be the next president of the United States, getting ready to face off tonight in the next debate. A preview from New Hampshire, next. In just about 30 minutes right here on KSAT, the top seven candidates in the race for the Democratic presidential nomination will be taking the debate stage in New Hampshire. Just a few days after the Iowa caucus, where an apparent close finish has produced a blossoming rivalry between the two frontrunners. ABC's Trevor Alt has a preview from the debate hall in Manchester. Top Democratic contenders taking their final walkthroughs before tonight's high stakes debate in New Hampshire. Of the seven candidates who will be on stage, Senator Bernie Sanders, the only one with a public campaign event Friday, and he used it to take aim at fellow Iowa frontrunner Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Right now. And I'm reading some headlines from newspapers about Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg has most exclusive billionaire donors of any Democrat. Both Sanders and Buttigieg have claimed victory in the Iowa caucuses. Friday night, they'll be standing right next to each other on stage. It has been an extraordinary week, and we are absolutely electrified by the energy that we are coming here with. Former Vice President Joe Biden will be in the center position. He's still leading nationally, but trying to right the ship after what he labeled a gut punch in Iowa. I'm not going anywhere. Senator Elizabeth Warren hoping to fight her way Just back up in the polls. This is a moment when people are off the sidelines and people are ready to get in this fight. And in the outer positions, Tom Steyer, Andrew Yang, and Amy Klobuchar making their push for a strong New Hampshire showing. This is a state uh, that has this big tradition of uh, basically giving uh, candidates a chance that they think can win in the election. New Hampshire has a unique voting population in that a large percentage of the people in the state are independent voters. They'll be taking in some of the final pitches from the candidates tonight, just days ahead of Tuesday's primary. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire.
White SUVs appear to be the vehicle of choice for drug smugglers trying to get their product into Texas from Mexico, but South Texas Border Patrol agents putting a stop to two such operations in the last couple of days. The first on Wednesday night near Garceno. Officers got a report of smugglers running near the Rio Grande. When agents got there, there was no sign of the smuggler, but they found this SUV. Inside it, nearly 350 pounds of pot. We're told it's worth about $275,000 on the street. The next morning, agents working in La Rosita saw smugglers loading an SUV down with marijuana. They took off from the river, but made a U-turn when they saw the law closing in. They ditched the drugs and their ride. Again, a white SUV. This was almost 700 pounds of pot worth a little more than $450. News around Texas now, a big rig rollover near Houston left pig parts scattered across the interstate. Yes, parts of pigs in that 18-wheeler. The driver's okay, but the morning commute was certainly not. Traffic was down to one lane after the accident. Cleanup crews treated the nasty mess as a hazmat situation. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. These teams are smoking. High school barbecue teams we're talking about. They're a thing, and a local high school has two of them, a boys team and a girls team, and both of those teams at Madison High School were champions in 2019. Photojournalist Robert Samron catching up to them as they broke in a new grill for the 2020 season. A little bit over a year ago, we had heard about high school barbecue. Our first meeting, we had eight kids, four boys, four girls. So we, we created a boys team and a girls team. All right, I need someone to close this pit. And I think it's like so different from any other team or like club you join in school because we can practice outside of school, but it's like, you feel like you're just like cooking, like with your family. Right now we're practicing on a brand new pit. I have a rack of ribs that I'm cooking in there right now. So just and turn we're just testing right different seasonings and breaking the new grill in. They love it. They love it. I mean, they we specialize. One of them does chicken, one does brisket, one does ribs. Okay. We're going to cut it like it's last time. Because of course, cooking, it's a, it's a social event, which is really nice. The only way to make good barbecue is to make bad barbecue. Yeah, we'll check it in yeah. minutes. It's, it's on them. They, they, if they're, if whatever they're producing is not good, then, hey, maybe we need to change it up or maybe we did something wrong. It's very competitive. Both our girls and boys have been grand champ or grand champion at some one of the regional events last year. It was awesome winning. Everyone is actually kind of shocked because we're an all girls team. Yeah, it's our first year barbecuing, so. I like it whenever they get it and they just take a big old bite and you see their eyes just like, whoa. Bring them all out and at the end of the day, I mean, we all get together, you know, talk about what we did and how, how much fun it was. I enjoy that satisfaction of knowing that all your hard work you put in is, has paid off. Mm. That is a cool club. Yeah. The glory days of pop icon Britney Spears on display at a new pop-up museum in California. Who's behind this trip through the not-so-distant past and what it will cost to take it still to come. And Netflix adding things all the time. The streaming company announcing that it will let customers pass on one of its features. Why the streaming service is allowing people those automatic previews to choose whether they want them or not. Time now to talk about what is coming up tonight on KSAT News at 9. One of my favorite segments we air every single week, a fact check by the Associated Press. These are very handy, like a lot of things that you guys show on the News at 9. They're, tonight, they're going to look into the claims about the coronavirus, the Iowa caucus, and the way illegal immigration is handled under the Trump administration. All things that we're taking on in the AP fact check tonight. Also, one of the things tonight, the week in 210. We do this every single Friday, give you a rundown of the biggest local headlines, all things that have happened here locally in the San Antonio area to make sure that you are all caught up as the week ends from what's happened in court with the uh, medical center rapist trial uh, to the very latest on Boeing and um, the coronavirus, the coronavirus as arriving, well. Yep. And then also, of course, the rampage leaving yep. San Antonio. Plus a preview of Stomp. And I've never seen Stomp, but it looks like something I would like because they basically <laughs> run around and hit a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> yes, Pound that is uh, that would be accurate. Yeah. It's really cool. They're playing this weekend at the Tobin Center. So, yes, this is the show where they use the trash cans, all kinds of stuff as drums to make really cool rhythms. So we're going to go behind the scenes of that show and tell you what you can check out here locally.
Stump looks like something Adam Kasky could, you know, enjoy. <laughs> Maybe take out a little of his frustration, you know. On whatever national day it is. Yeah, on whatever national day it is. I've got a few other special ways to take out my frustrations. <laughs> yeah? A little Krav Maga action, right? Ah. The Krav jib. It's good stuff. It's good workout, too. <laughs> and it's a confidence builder. I'm serious. Yeah. Feel good about yourself. You Kasky Maga. Krav McCaskey. <laughs> now, we, now we're on to something. I'm not that good, though. All right, 71 degrees right now as we go through the night. Temperature is falling down through the 50s and then down into the 40s. So we'll talk about our weekend, some changes to come there, along with rain chances that are looking more promising. We'll talk about it all coming up. It is very minimal uh, for the theft rate, under 3%, and in some cases we've had stores that had zero theft. A new convenience store in Wisconsin doesn't have much of a theft problem despite the fact no one works there. It's a three-square market in Brookfield, just outside of Milwaukee. Customers grab what they want, check out their own purchases. The store appears to be the first of its kind in Wisconsin. It does have off-site employees who come in and stock shelves, but don't think this store runs on the honor system. It has 16 surveillance cameras inside, you know, just in case. Just in case. Yeah. Interesting concept. All right. In the buzz today, Netflix has heard the feedback on that preview autoplay feature on the streaming service. Have you noticed this? Yeah. I'm not a big fan myself. Yeah. A lot of people don't like it. So now users can turn it off. The company announced this week that it's allowing viewers to disable this. I think Amazon has something similar. Ah. Yeah, it can be pretty annoying. You log on to Netflix, a preview of the featured program just starts playing. If you scan too slowly through titles, a preview then plays for each selection you land on. A lot of people must not have liked the forced previewing. In its tweet, Netflix said, quote, we've heard the feedback loud and clear, end quote. Then it sends people to the home page where it explains how to turn off both preview autoplay and autoplay for episodes. All right, so now I've got to figure that out. Yeah. Britney Spears fans head west if you want a comprehensive look back at the pop icon's career. An interactive pop-up museum called The Zone Britney Spears has opened in Los Angeles. The nine rooms are each designed to mimic a different Spears video or musical era. It looks huge. Inside the room, some of Spears' most iconic outfits and music videos, including, of course, Baby One More Time, mm -hmm. Toxic, and I'm a slave for you. Four. I got it, yeah, for you. There's no need to hurry. The pop-up runs through April 26th. It is not cheap. It is $60 Ooh, to get in. 60, 60 bucks to get in? Dollars. Well, you can just listen yeah. to some Britney Spears. Yeah. What national day is it today? One that might even pique Adam Kasky's interest. It is National Periodic Table Day. Did you hear that? Something you probably haven't get a, given a lot of thought to since chemistry class, unless you're a scientist. But today, we can take a walk down memory lane and test your knowledge of the elements. Those elements have been organized based on their properties since the early 1800s. But the modern day periodic table didn't get its start until about 50 years later. A Russian chemist formulated the periodic law and created a version of the table. The current table feature, features 118 elements. So why February 7th for National Periodic Table Day? Well, the first periodic table was published on this date in 1863. Ah, it has a good meaning. So I like that. Kind of like an anniversary type thing. Very good. It is pretty fascinating, too, the whole concept of it and everything involved. Yeah, I'm I losing knew. it all right now. I, I get it. It sounds way. fascinating. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here we go. <laughs> I appreciate that those types of things. Well, we're, we appreciate we can find one that you don't hate. All right, what is lead? PB. It's one of the See? tricky ones. I thought that was peanut butter. <laughs> That's how I remember it. <laughs> It's one of the few I remember. <laughs> Got it. All right, so as we get into the weekend, it's still going to be comfortable outside, but it does look like we'll have a little chance of rain enter the picture and better chances then as we get into next week. So let's talk about our overall weather pattern and what's happening. Notice that nice sunset on the horizon there. The clouds are, will be rolling in this weekend. And I think overall we'll see a decent amount of gray in our sky throughout the weekend, but 
not a dreary weekend. Cooler next week, that's for sure. And with it, a favorable pattern for some rainfall. 71 right now. We made it into the 70s after a morning in the 30s. And we still have the dry air at dew point right now of 31 degrees. So you notice the lack of humidity in the air. It's nice and crisp. Temperatures right now, you look off to the west and southwest. Catula's near 80. Del Rio 77, but down to 57 in Fredericksburg. So wide ranging numbers out there. This is dry air really heats up efficiently during the day and cools off rather efficiently at night as well. And you can see the difference in temperatures across the state from nearly 80 in Laredo to 41 in Amarillo. Abilene's at 51, but I want to point this out. This little area of white here on the visible satellite imagery. That's the remaining snow from the snow that they picked up a few days ago. It, you can see the snow actually melting in and quite a bit throughout the day. Still a little bit to play with there. Kids having a little bit of fun north of I-20 in parts of north central Texas, and that's going to be all gone by tomorrow as temperatures will continue to be well above freezing. So let's switch over to our water vapor imagery because this is a better way to really find a few features in the atmosphere that we look for to give us some rain. And we have two of them we're watching now. Notice moving into Washington State, this little swirl in the upper levels. That's one disturbance we're watching. And then basically halfway between here and Hawaii, we have this other swirl. This is a bigger one, not necessarily stronger, more, more potent, but it's a broader circulation. These two upper disturbances, these are going to come together and drop into about the Baja Peninsula as we get to the end of the weekend and into Monday. And that's going to set us up for better rain chances. So notice Monday, that upper level disturbance, the two come together, make one big upper level swirl with it energy being carried along by the upper level winds into Texas and some Pacific moisture as well. And all of that I think will give us daily rain chances from Sunday all the way through Thursday morning. Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to see a whole lot of rain all those days or very widespread rain, but we at least have a chance. I think mostly isolated in nature, mainly widely separated showers Monday and Tuesday and then Wednesday. As of now, that looks like our best shot at more meaningful rain. It doesn't mean the bullseye is going to be right over South Texas, but at least somewhere in Texas, we have high odds of getting good rainfall and it could be us. OK, with these upper level patterns, those cut off low pressures, upper level low pressure systems. They're very finicky and tricky to forecast this far out, so things will be changing and we'll be fine tuning the forecast in the days ahead. But as it stands right now, we'll say about isolated 30% Sunday, Monday, raise it to 40%, so scattered on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, we should peak around 60% chance. And again, we'll be modifying, fine tuning those numbers. As for the weekend, a little chance of rain as we get into Sunday. A few isolated light showers likely to pop up, but not everybody's going to see them, that's for sure. Variable cloud cover throughout the weekend Then on Sunday, I think it'll be more clouds than sun, more gray in the sky than blue and temperatures in the 60s to right near 70. But that cold front hits on Monday. So as our weather pattern shifts, we'll also have a cold front sliding through and that's going to drop those temperatures down into the 50s with that dampness wow. by the middle part of the week. So we'll really be noticing this change. Mm -hmm. What are those hearts on Friday again? <laughs> Katie Blake reminded me what they are. Yeah. I, I guess it's Valentine's Day next Friday. It is. It's not a guess. It is next Friday. Oh, okay. Friday. Yeah. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for letting everybody know. And you're welcome, guys. <laughs> In case you missed it, coming up next. Here's today's I See Why Am I. It is Friday. It is February 7th. A horrible crash in downtown, killing a driver overnight. He slammed his vehicle into a concrete barrier on I-37 and did not survive. To give you an idea of where this happened, the accident on 281 northbound near the Alamo Dome on one side and Marriott River Center on the other side of the highway. Police say they got the call at 2 this morning for a fatal accident involving only one car. When first responders arrived on scene, they pronounced the man dead. Police say they are not sure if the victim was ejected from his car, but they did find him outside of his SUV. This noon, San Antonio police searching for a pair of suspects accused of attacking a man to steal his truck, his wallet, and even his tacos. The carjacking happened around 6.30 this morning outside of a Mexican restaurant. Police say the man had just bought his tacos. He was getting into his truck when he was approached by the two men, one of whom 
whom had a gun. Officers say the suspects punched the man in the face and then drove off with his pickup truck. A federal appeals court has dismissed a lawsuit by congressional Democrats against President Trump. Their opinion overturned a ruling from a trial level judge. The suit alleged Trump violated the emoluments clause of the Constitution when he refused to allow them to review and approve his financial interests. Two other cases that claim President Trump violated the anti-corruption emoluments clause are still moving through the courts. Want to travel to a galaxy far, far away? Disney is going to start taking reservations this year for Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, a hotel experience, which is in Orlando, Florida. The hotel isn't scheduled to open until the year 2021. And for more information, check it out online. Big traffic tie up to tell you about here. The camera at I-35 and Wiener, you're looking at the southbound lanes. That's actually the off ramp there where the accident has happened. That's where you see all those flashing lights. So it looks like traffic just beyond that is picking up once drivers get past all of that congestion. But things for sure slow going here at I-35 near Wiener. Yeah, I think that's a thousand oaks exit. Not as chilly tomorrow morning, down in the lower 40s, then mid 60s by the afternoon with some added clouds later in the day and a few showers possible later on Sunday. All right. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for watching the news at six. See you on the night beat at 10 and online at nine.